and I go to settings right here. And then if I scroll to my speech settings, where are my speech settings? There we go, you click on speech, and then you'll see that um, we can choose male or female as the default voice. Programmatically, you have the choice of choosing male or female though from your app. You don't have to rely on the default. But sometimes some users prefer to use a default voice. So it might be a good idea to, you can detect all of this. And then the speech language is right here. You can see all the languages. Notice how in the emulator, there are no download options. They're already pre-installed for you. So doing demos with the emulator works really well because then you can start playing with different voices without having to take hours to install new languages on your phone. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna load up uh, another demo right here. And I'm gonna switch to my I call it a speech ambiance demo. The ambiance part is gonna come a little lighter. So for this one, actually it's a demo that works both on Windows and on Windows Phone. Uh, it's basically a universal app. It does share uh, most of its UI right here. And uh, so if you wanna look at this right here, you can see I have a Windows Phone project, I have a Windows project, and I have a shared project. So let me just run it for you so you can see uh, what it looks like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the Windows Phone version first because the cool thing is because we have all those extra voices on this machine on Windows right here, I only have English voices. But inside of the Windows Phone, we have access to more voices. So what is this demo? So this is the fun part. When I said that speech can be for things that are um, a little more, I would say like beyond lifestyle and productivity, it can also be something for fun. I, I'm sending a challenge to all of you guys out there. Uh, so all you developers, build some games you can play completely hands-free. I, I will play them. I drive around a lot when I go to events and I would love nothing more than to be able to play games. As I said, I'm a gamer, but I don't have time to play games at home when I, I'm working, of course. So what I'm driving around is usually when I have some downtime. Sometimes I listen to music, sometimes I listen to podcasts. I would love to play some games. And I had this idea of basically creating these completely hands-free, eyes-free as well, important eyes-free, so you don't have to look at a device, where you can just play with speech. So this is kind of a little uh, setup here where the phone is gonna read a sentence, kind of like you're playing this role-playing game, you're crawling through a dungeon, and you kinda, the phone is like your dungeon master, basically walking you through everything that's going on. In this case, it's just a fixed sentence, but you can easily see how these technologies can be pieced together to create a game. So what we're doing here is we have a piece of text already pre-programmed. This is a slider that I can use for a speed, but I'm not gonna cover those right now. I'm gonna get to SSML afterwards. The first thing we can do is we can use different voices. So you notice here how in my combo box, I can actually choose any of the voices. Of course, in this case, I'm only showing the name of the, of the voice, so you kind of have to know which voice is which. Like for example, Zira and Mark are the American voices. Uh, George and Susan are the voices for Great Britain. Uh, Hira and Ravi are English for India, and I know Stefan is German. So of course, you're, if you pass some English text to a non-English voice, well, you're basically gonna get like to go the equivalent of someone who's speaking English with a really thick accent, <laughs> you know, kind of like me right now. So, so for example, if I pick the default, which is zero, and then if I hit uh, play on this. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. The air is cold is. and damp. Okay, cool. You can hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. Okay, so now I have a voice, but then what I could do is I can go switch to a different voice. I can say, I wanna hear this with Mark, who's the American male voice. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. The air is cold and damp. You can hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. So that's Mark's voice. Now you can switch to different regions as well for those languages that support it. Like Spanish has Spain and Mexico. English has Great Britain, US and India. So for example, if I switch to Susan, Susan's British. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. It, it just works The air well. is cold I mean, and damp. Susan sounds You can hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. So, okay, so, so in terms of how I do this here, uh, let me just show you in the code behind us, and this is the same code for both. So let me open this right here. <clears throat> So I basically have two methods that I'm using for reading. 
And you'll notice here that there's, uh, I call it read boring text and read SSML text. We're gonna get to SSML right after this. So in this case right now, uh, I was actually calling read SSML using default settings, but I could have easily just used uh, read uh, boring text like this. Um, and it's very similar code to what you've seen. Whoop. It's very similar code to what you've seen before right here. Um, we're calling and we're looking for uh, the voice, but what I could do as well is I could uh, comment this voice right here, where instead of using this, I could say, you know what? Simply get the list from the, the voice from my list. So my current voices right here, my voice information comes from the, uh, the list box that I have, my, my combo box. My combo box has already been populated right here. If you look at the initialization, you can see that my, looking at my code right here. So my item, the item source of my list voice is basically all the voices from the synthesizer. And then I use the display name of the voice as the selected value path. And then the selected value by default is gonna be the default voice. So if you wanna know which voice the user has installed by default, you can simply call speech synthesizer dot default voice, and that's going to return the voice information of that voice alone. So this is how right here, I would have to comment this too. This is how right here now I can say, give me the current voice by picking the selected item and then assigning that current voice as the voice of my speech synthesizer. Then the text afterwards, it's, the code is, very, is the same. Synthesize text to stream async, set the source and play it. So that's the, the base on how you can get started and assign different voices. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dig a little more. Whoop, let me go back to my slides. We're gonna dig a little more into how, whoop, I don't want the keyboard. I just wanna start this. How we can then manipulate the voice a little more to change how it works using speech synthesis markup language. So the speech synthesis markup language is actually a standard from the W3C. It's been around for quite a while and uh, Microsoft supports it. And we, we support it in both the Windows and the Windows Phone 8.1 speech SDK. You can find all the information at the W3C website right here. And the cool thing about SSML is that it allows you to tweak the way the voice is gonna sound by either using the entire text you're gonna pass or maybe just a portion of your text. So what can you do with SSML? So this is an example right here on screen of an, a piece of XML, because so SSML is XML based. And this is a piece of XML that's, the, the text is, this is the text that will be read by the speech synthesizer. But you'll notice that we have a few attributes that are wrapping, a few elements that are wrapping this. First of all, we're choosing the voice. So we are saying that we want to use the voice called Microsoft Zero Mobile. So SSML is one way to change the voice. Instead of changing it directly on a, on a synthesizer, you can actually change it directly in the SSML. What does that mean? That means one piece of text could technically have multiple voices. So you could alternate like a conversation, like Susan says something, and then Mark says something, and then Zira says something. Some of the things you can manipulate with SSML will include the voice itself. You can change the rate or the speed at which it's gonna be read. Sometimes some users might want a voice that's a little slower, a little faster. You wanna change the pitch. Don't expect huge shifts in pitch. It's basically just gonna make the voice uh, in terms of hertz, like the, the, the the audio value for the, 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 wave file, the wave sound is gonna be either a little higher or a little lower, but you're not suddenly gonna turn, um, you know, like a really, really high pitched voice into like a, a really, really low pitched voice, you know? So it's not like I'm suddenly gonna sound like Barry White, you know? Um, and then uh, the volume also can be changed. So you can affect the volume throughout the text. So this one here affects the entire text, but you can also change uh, more advanced things. The cool thing with SSML also is that you can use it to change the speech pronunciation as well, or the enunciation of certain words. This is done using uh, phonemes, uh, phonemes, phonemes, right? Phonemes. Um, phonemes basically will allow you to tweak how it will enunciate certain words. It's possible sometimes you pass a piece of string over to the speech synthesizer and then you realize, wow, this is not at all uh, the way that word is said. So using phonemes, you can actually change this enunciation and you have to know kind of like this syntax right here. You see the pH equals, this is how you would say the word whatchamacallit. 
So, of course, whatchamacallit is not a word in the English language, but it's kind of a slangy expression, you know, when you talk to someone like, I wanted that thing, uh, whatchamacallit, you know? Well, if you want your, uh, your phone to get a little more uh, slangy, then you can use things like this means whatchamacallit. And this is all documented in the W3C standard. And you can experiment with this. There are some uh, articles and tables that have been uh, published also to show some of the common pronunciations for things. So, of course, by default, the voice will recognize a lot of uh, things for you. But if you want to change something, let's say you have a made-up word, or maybe it's for a brand where the, na the name of that brand is, um, is not the common way that you would pronounce it, then you can use phonemes to, uh, to affect it. So you can use phonemes to put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. The, the emphasis, yes, exactly. Great emphasis here. <laughs> Yeah, being with English is my second language. I know that I, I I make mistakes all the time. You know, with things like this, it'd be great if I could have my own table of, of phonemes. <laughs> Pho phonemes? I, I can't get that word right. Phonemes, basically, that my my own brain could look it up. You know, to say it right. Phoneme would be at the top of that list. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So if I go back right here to my set, to the same demo, you'll notice that I have a read SSML text. In read SSML, the difference is that instead of simply passing a string, now I'm actually passing an entire XML document to it. So all you have to do is cr piece together that XML document. You can either using, do it using string concatenation. You can use it by do, using some of the XML document classes inside of .NET. And um, you can then create this SSML document. And then when you want to synthesize it, all you have to say is instead of calling synthesize text to stream async, you're going to call synthesize SSML to stream async. That's it. It's as simple as that. And the rest is the same. You set the source and you play it. So in this one here, what I'm doing is I'm changing the voice name to the current voice display name is selected inside of my combo box. And then I, I'm also using a tag called uh, the element called prosody. And then where I, I can change the pitch and I can change the rate. So the rate, the default rate would be one. So a faster rate would be 1.1, 1.2. And a lower rate, like slower, would be 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.6. If it's too slow, it really becomes annoying. And then finally, there's also the pitch. The pitch, you can, you can experiment with this. My observations is that simply using a value in Hertz doesn't work all that well. You can say plus or minus a number of Hertz to kind of change that default voice. But there's also a bunch of presets you can use, like there's default, and then you have medium, low, high, X low, and X high, which is exactly what I've populated in my combo box right here. Default, X low, low, medium, high, and X high, which are the, the easy ways you can, you can affect a voice here. So if I'm gonna run this again, Oh, actually, no, I was using the read boring voice. So let me just recomment that right here. So when I call my, uh, instead of calling my read boring text, I'm going to call read SSML text right here. So if I run this. Now, let's say that I want, um, this is a little more dramatic. You know, I'm crawling through a dungeon right here, so I want to make sure that we don't read too fast. So I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Mark again. I'm going to make his voice a little lower. I'll go extra low. Again, as I said, don't expect huge differences in here. And then I'm going to make him go just a little slower right here. So like this. So he's going to talk a little slower for the whole sentence. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. So you can The air is cold and damp. <laughs> sure, it sounds great. Though. You can it's hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. So you can see there was a difference there. And if I immediately switch over, for example, to extra high and maybe higher speed. You are standing at the entrance of a dungeon. The air so is cold and damp. Really fast. You can hear some water dripping, echoing in the background. So you can see how SSML can be quite powerful. It really allows you to change the, the, the pitch, the speed, the voice itself, uh, the volume even. But the cool thing is that you can also do this for pieces of text. So you don't have to change the entire text. It could just be a portion of text, and you can alternate between settings. So you could have one SSML document that sounds like a conversation between a few people. Um, next, we're going to look at a few advanced text-to-speech topics uh, in the time we have left in this module, where uh, the first one that we're going to look at is, for example, we, noticed, we saw how 
it's not the speech synthesizer directly that's speaking, it's the media element. And the media element uses a stream that was created by the speech synthesizer. The cool thing by creating this intermediate stream is that we can then use it and we can persist it. Like for example, here we have a piece of code and I have a demo that I, that's available. It's actually uh, live from the SDK. We can, people can download it today. Uh, it's very simple. Um, I can actually show you the whatchamacallit as well. And this one here simply shows how uh, we can create a storage stream and then we can take the stream that we've created with the speech synthesizer and then we can write the stream to a file. So we, we create a new file and we say file open async in read write mode and then we simply get our output stream and then transfer it to that, uh, to that stream and we write it using the stream writer and then we use the data writer and we create a new data writer and pass in our output stream right here. And then we start copying over in there so we read uh, a chunk of uh, 4Ks basically. And then while this is done, we simply write it to the buffer. So this is how we can create a stream and write it to a file. So this code is, is very simplistic. Also, it's the kind of code you can easily lift, put inside of your applications. What can you do with that file afterwards? Well, you took a piece of text, you convert it into a stream. Now you have this audio file, like it would be a WAV file. And then you can email it to someone. You can, if it's small enough, I guess 